Okay, and here we have it. This is quite a milestone. This is all the body armor at, I'd say, 95% complete. You know, I'll probably be making a few little adjustments here and there. I'll be seeing areas that maybe I see some tiling going on and I want to fix that, or I want to add some special texture to some of the bricks. Um, we'll see. Obviously, the painting is going to take some amount of time, but definitely, definitely in the upper 90s as far as how much of the percentage they are done, which is exciting. Very exciting. I'm actually really seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it is, what is it? It's, oh, it's Valentine's Day. So it's March, no, it's February 14th. And that means uh, I have, let's see, February, March, April. Okay, so I have about eight weeks to finish this guy for Norwestcon, which I, I have him entered in the art show, which means doggone it, I'm really going to do it this time. <sighs> so I, I'm sure I mentioned this at some point in the past four years. Um, when you, when you do a sculpture, you want to do the stuff that you're going to see the least when you actually view the piece. You, you do that stuff first. And so by the time you get to the end, which is what I'm getting at now, I got to do uh, uh, the, you know, all the detail stuff for the face plate. Um, I've had literally hundreds and hundreds of hours practicing the techniques that went into this, meaning that I approach this at closer to, you know, a master level of experience making cool stuff. And because this is the focal point of the piece, that's where it deserves to have the very best work applied to it. So, um, one of the things that I picked up along the way while building all this stuff is uh, making it making it modular. I was kind of avoiding that because just the, then you have the number of pieces you have to deal with and all that kind of stuff. But really, it's it's just way better to make more pieces. It takes a little bit of extra time to make sure they all fit together, you know, like a key and a lock. Um, but it's totally worth it because you get so many better angles that you can come in with your sanding and carving tools. You know, when this stuff was together, I can, you know, kind of get in between these guys, but when they're apart, I can get the whole, you know, arc of it and it's just better. That's what it comes down to. So that particular lesson I'm going to apply to the head. Um, you know, and initially I was going to just sculpt it right on there. Now I'm thinking I'm going to go through the hopefully not too painful process of cutting the armor off of the head so that, and possibly cutting that into a couple different pieces so that I have access to all the aforementioned nooks and crannies. Because if there's one thing that annoys the crap out of me, it's trying to sculpt inside a nook and a cranny, you know, with your tool and it's angled weird and you're, and then it pops out and it slices your thumb off, you know. Um, or ultimately you just don't get as good a result. You don't get that nice crisp detail all over. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to, going to try to do a faceectomy like the, uh, the hit film face off, not the hit TV face off, which is actually much better, but no, like that Nicolas Cage and John Travolta face off that one. Um, God, that made no sense. They're their facial like bone structure is just like complete opposites. John Travolta is like this totally round face and and crazy guy's got this like super skinny face. Just they they could not swap faces. I'm sorry. I just couldn't. Okay. Let's do some cutting. So hopefully I can do this without ruining my lighting.
All right, so the head is close to being done. Uh, close enough where I need to get the eye things, window things on there. Um, and so what I did for the eyes and the uh, wander figure that's gonna sit up top is I sculpted that in on the computer in a program called ZBrush. Um, I'll just show you a quick fast forwarded uh, version here. You can see basically you build it up in the same way that, well, not exactly the same way, but very similar to how you do traditional clay. It starts out all lumpy and rough, and then you go in and slowly refine it, adding more and more details. Um, I'm not gonna go into the even the basics of this program because it's just it's just so much and there's you know if you want to learn zbrush there's a billion trillion tutorials out there for that already so it's a very complicated program really counter uh intuitive <laughs> it's super obnoxious to learn but it's what everyone in the game industry and the film industry uses to make all those like cool cg things you see like Iron Man's and Incredible Hulks and dragons and stuff. So anyway, yeah, I I made Wander. I made the little insignia here, and I got them printed in this material that is uh, clear-ish. It's kind of translucent, kind of yellow-ish. It's the it's the highest detail stuff that Shapeways does. I have a tutorial about using Shapeways. Um, back there in the list if you want to check that out but essentially um, this is kind of a shortcut you know I, I could have sculpted this traditionally and then made a mold and then cast that in a clear stuff um, it's just faster and easier to sculpt it on the computer and have it printed out um, now I got two of these I got two of these done because I want to give away one as a prize um, on kind of a promo that I'm doing for the channel. And so what I did was, you can see there's this weird little, little shape here. This is, uh, this is gonna be the, the eye covering. And I just, I have it attached to this other sculpture, to the foot of Wander, because it, uh, you get charged per piece when you print stuff, so having them stuck together is better. And then it's, it's pretty easy to just pop it off. And now I have the little, little detailed part. So, let's see how these eyes are going to work. You can see I also, um printed out the little tabard he's got on paper. I printed it out two-sided, um, and then I'll coat that with something to stiffen it up, and you got a perfect little uh, little cloth tabard there, just taken almost directly from the game. I had to do a little bit of uh, work to like stretch it out the way it's actually stretched out on the geometry, but um, I mean, it's essentially from the game, so. Now, one of the things I'm going to have to experiment with a little bit is the uh, translucency of these guys. See, they're going to sit on the eyeball like so. And you can see in the game art, there's, there's kind of, mm, not on that one so well. Let's look at this one. You can see there's basically like three-ish lights in there that kind of form a triangle. So I tried to mimic that in the geometry. It's pretty hard to see, but it's there. There's, there's three little circles. And I'm not sure how diffused I want the light. In the, in the game, it's pretty diffuse. You don't make out three like individual circles. So I was gonna try maybe stuffing some cotton in there to diffuse it a little bit. Um, let me try a couple different things. Yeah, that 
that might be a little too much. Uh, I also have this packing foam that my Nintendo Switch came in. I thought that might work. Yeah, you can see there's, you can still definitely make out the three points through this, but they're much softer points. Then there's also a pretty, pretty strong pupil dark spot in there. So to accomplish that, I'm just going to put a dot of black paint in the uh, in the middle. Are, this light down here is not not close enough to the middle. I'm not sure what to do about that. It doesn't doesn't want to budge. I suppose when it's diffused, it's not gonna be that much of a difference, though. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to pick up on the camera, I think, but uh, yeah, it's getting the job done. So yeah, I'll just uh, sculpt, I'll use epoxy clay to seal those in and we'll be good to go. If you're wondering why I used a uh, wooden stick, a little stir stick for painting instead of a paintbrush, it is literally because I'm too lazy and I don't want to have to clean a paintbrush. Can you believe that? It's ridiculous. Sadly, the uh, parts of the surface of the print are cloudier than others. So that's kind of causing issues for um, the symmetry that I'm trying to create. I kind of wonder what would happen if I did a little bit of a wash on this and then sanded down uh, the paint so that you just saw the little details in the grooves. Hmm. I don't know if I want to risk it. I really should have printed more than one eyeball. I should have printed a couple for testing. Pro tip there. Think ahead, unlike me. Hmm. I mean, you kind of see the uh, detail in there but you kind of don't. Looks like both of them kind of have one cloudy third and then two clear thirds. So if I put the cloudy third in the same place on both sides, that will at least have a consistent effect. Just trying to decide, should it go down or up? Probably cloudy side up and the reason I'm thinking that is because there's going to be a lot of shadow from his eyebrows coming down 
blocking, um, you know, ambient light from hitting them. And so, uh, since it'll be in shadow, that it'll be punctuated anyway, so that might even it out a bit, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I don't know if that makes sense. That's just, that's my artist intuition speaking. And let me tell you, Mr. Artist Intuition is not always right. I'm gonna super glue this in place before I add the epoxy clay because it could squash around while I'm while I'm applying the clay. Alright, so I do not have a lot of experience painting 3D uh, printed objects. This is going to be my best guess. I'm going to use um, Army Painter brand uh, Leather Brown. So I'm choosing a brown primer because most of his colors are earth tones. His, he's got a Caucasian skin tone, uh, brownish blackish hair, a lot of leather on them and stuff so it just makes sense to to start with that as a base coat Check out our wonders is, is. so you can see the uh, base coat makes it so that you can actually see all that incredible detail on there. I'm really impressed that things like the these little seams are visible. Yeah, it's nice. Um, there are texture artifacts that you can see um, especially on the flatter surfaces if you look at let's see, at flat places like the shin guard you can see that kind of striated look and that is just an artifact of 3d printing uh, for the most part it works on here because he's covered in leather and cloth and fibrous stuff that I think that the texture doesn't harm at all. In fact, it kind of enhances it. 
Um, there are a few places on the skin, like on his face here, that it, we do not want that texture. So I'm going to have to do some very fine little sanding to try to get rid of that. Let's see if it's on both prints. Yeah, not quite as bad on that one, but... Yeah, so we'll do some more, more sanding and priming, and uh, then we'll see what we can do about coloring. I might have to run a little wire down the back of the sword to keep it straight. Looks like no matter what I do, I can't, I can't unbend it. It just came that way. I think that is also just one of those risks you take when you print really super thin stuff. It's the material is a little bit unpredictable it's got it's got some tolerance you got to take into account Let's see what i've got got this uh dental wire which is i think it's stainless steel and it's super um super strong for how thin it is Let's see what the thinnest one I have is. This might be it. Let's see, 0 0.28, 0 0.3. Although, looks like these may have been mixed and matched a bit, unfortunately, over the years. So the next question is, how do I fix it? I'm guessing I can drill a tiny little hole with a tiny little hand drill. Let's see. Where's my tiny little hand drill? Here we go. Boy, that's really awkward. All right, looks like I'm able to kind of uh, dig a little trench in there just by scraping the tip of my X-Acto over there. That'll be helpful. It would be pretty easy just to cut the hand off cleanly. Drill the hole, do the wire, and then reattach the hand. But I'm a little worried about strength at that point. So I'm gonna try it the awkward way first. And if the awkward way gets too awkward, then we'll go back to, and we'll do a plan B. Man, this, uh, the material that this printed stuff is, I think it's some kind of resin, it does not like to drill. I don't know what it is about it. it it's weird, it kind of chips and flakes when you, when you try to carve it, and whatever that uh, property is, it does not like drilling. It just resists it. I drilled a hole in each of his feet so that I can stick a pin through to make sure that it's uh, stuck onto the head really well. And yeah, I think it took me about five minutes for each of these holes. I dare not use an electric drill because this stuff is fragile and it'd be really easy to just ham-fistedly break through a piece, I think. So pro tip number 93 is uh, don't put ham on your hands while drilling. <sighs> or fisting. So it just popped out right there, which is fine. It's very easy to just epoxy over that.
Okay, using some super glue quick dry app, uh, activator. Hopefully that doesn't have any adverse effects with the paint, but you never know. Much better, much straighter. Now I'll just uh, cover over that with uh, epoxy sculpt. But first, let's get this guy sanded up. Boy, this part of his face is really rough. Just using the flat of my blade to kind of shave off some of that texture. 